It's the last one. <laughs> it's the last one. Whatever. That's how you feel. That's how I feel about the whole season. That's Amber. fair. It's the Browns halftime live. The final one of the regular season as the Browns take on the Steelers. Mercifully. Ooh, yeah, this has uh, been an interesting game. An interesting guy. Don't. <laughs> this feels like, doesn't this feel like every game of the Browns season? It does. If you look at the score and you say to yourself, Becky, get out of here. You look at the score and you say to yourself, why is this the way that it is? Right? Like, it felt like for the, I mean, the Browns controlled that game. The first half of the game, outside of two minutes, and they're down ten to seven. And I tweet out, "Good teams score when they get the ball with a minute forty before half." And what happens? Deshaun Watson promptly throws an interception, and the Pittsburgh Steelers go down and get points. That's the difference of the season, Cam. The Browns just aren't good. Yeah, I mean, that is. A huge thing. A, a successful team and a team that's going to show promise going into this 2023 season, which is what it's all about, makes plays like that. Goes into the half on, on a stronger note. Even even the defense, I'll say, like, there's been moments today. You had almost two. Almost two takeaways. You had one f fumble. Looked like another. Defense has a breakdown. Leads to a touchdown. They're all over the place, that roller coaster ride. It is kind of this season summed up in one game right here. And it's that's what makes it so strange is because, you know, you see the defense kind of taking a turn the past couple games and, and getting back on track. And now they're roller coastering again. You see Deshaun Watson looking really strong in that second half of his last game and comes out roller coastering today. It's just all over the place. Yeah, I think, Cam, you know, we have said this multiple times is that good teams do all the things the Browns do over the course of a game, but then they don't they don't hurt themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson had been playing really well, showing us shades of the MVP caliber player that he was. The play extensions, Cam, and the playmaking ability like we saw on that drive that he threw that touchdown to Njoku, that's what made Deshaun Watson one of the best in the NFL. That's what made him, Ronda said, $250 million quarterback. That's what made him the $230 million guaranteed quarterback that he is right now. But then the turnover, right? Defensively, playing very well against this team. And then the back-breaking uh, coverage miscue that led to the long touchdown. Um, making plays down the field and then hurting yourself with the penalties that we've seen the Browns do now at least on two occasions this game. This is what this Browns team does. They show us they're capable of the plays that make you a good team, but they can't sustain things and they can't get out of their own way. This is exactly what we have seen all season from this team, and you're right, summed up in one half of football against Pittsburgh. Yeah, the penalties have been brutal, and I know yeah. – you know, like Al are here, pass interference call was garbage. There's been some questionable officiating, but to be fair, the Browns have also gotten their way. You can't really put it on them because it's been, it has been a messy game all around on both sides. And so you've got you've got situations where you have great drives taken back by penalties. That can't happen. Good teams don't let that happen. Penalties are a part of this game and they are unavoidable all the time. Someone will commit a penalty. That's just the name of this game. But in the situations that they are committing them in, that is undisciplined. That is where you've got to focus. You can't have that because that is how you lose games. It's a recipe for disaster. It will stall your drives. It will. It, it doesn't work out. You saw, I mean, the Steelers, it stalls out drives. The Steelers had their drives stalled out themselves with yeah. a bad penalty on them. It happens from both teams. The difference is that it's happening at an absurd rate for the Cleveland Browns, and it has been an ongoing issue that they have been roller coastering again to work through. I feel like I find myself saying every week, the good teams, the Chiefs, the Bills, might do one of the three things the Browns do over the course of a game. They might do one, but they're good enough that they don't do any of the other things and they overcome that one mistake. The Browns throw the interception. The Browns have the penalties. The Browns have the coverage mistakes that lead to wide open touchdowns. Pickens walking into the end zone. Good teams don't do all of them. The Browns do them all. They so do they pilot. show us flashes that they can be a very good team. And we see those pieces. They just can't overcome 
all of the mistakes that they make. Chucks makes a good point here. Chucks says biggest mystery of the year. Why did Dearness Johnson ride the bench? Uh, you know, we've all been frustrated with Kareem Hunt and the usage that Kareem Hunt has gotten. And when Kareem Hunt gets the usage, he just doesn't seem to have the explosion that he had even last season. But yeah, why bring back Dearness Johnson? We talked in the offseason about this three-headed monster, right? Dearness Johnson, when he had the opportunities to prove it last year, he proved he's a very capable running back. I mean, how many touches does he have this year? Four or five? Yeah. And I mean, it, it's one of those mysteries, those, those question marks. It is a very big mystery because it would make more sense too. I would understand if, you know, Jerome Ford was really getting in there a lot too and kind of taking over those snaps and the, okay, you kept Dearness Johnson just in case Jerome Ford didn't pan out, but Jerome Ford hasn't been really used at running back a lot either. He's their, he's their return guy now and he's really showed promise in that, but at kick return. But other than that, they have not used him much. He shows promise to be able to do that. I think you in the second half, you might see a little bit more uh, of some of those other running backs because Kareem Hunt is being evaluated for a head injury and is questionable for return. But it is, it's a strange thing, especially when he doesn't have that juice and he has been struggling a lot and it doesn't look like Kareem Hunt will be back with the team next year if it continues like this. So maybe this is a this was a, a game for them to figure it out, uh, see what he's capable of, put him on. But it's it's very strange. Can you um... – <laughs> Carly. Can you highlight Robert's um, comment here? It says, okay, Cam and John, answer me this. Knowing all the coaching mishaps and mess this season, why would you bring this coaching staff back? Kevin Stefanski's going to get a pass because he was a coach of the year two years ago, but also because they made this move for Deshaun Watson. They're going to give him the opportunity with Deshaun Watson for an entire season. He is going to get a pass. Woods and Prefer, don't you get the sense that like this team as a whole, like we mentioned, in that they do some things that are really, really good, and then they shoot themselves in the foot. Woods and Prefer, as the season has gone on, have almost – maybe saved their jobs, right? Because second half of the season, Brown's defense has actually been pretty good. Special teams has come along. Bohorquez is now uh, is your AFC uh, special teams player of the week. They had the, the punt return for the touchdown from Donovan Peoples-Jones a couple of weeks ago. Have these guys now done enough to, to be back in Cleveland next year, Theo? Uh, I called you Theo for some oh, reason, my oh. five-year-old. Cameron. All right, we're close. You know, he's in this conversation too. <laughs> did, they, did they do enough? I, uh, you know I think that <laughs> who knows? I, I think I think Prefer is probably more likely to stay mm. than Joe Woods. I think Joe Woods has been on a hot seat for a while. And it's not so much that his defense is just this horrible mess all the time because he has turned it around in the second half of the year. I mean, you see it here. The defense is much better than it was in the first half of the year. But yeah. last year, the same thing happened. It started off halfway through the season the defense was all out of sorts it took until the second half of last year to get back on track you have that same thing happen again it becomes a situation of okay when is it not so much the talent and not so much the guys not executing their assignment but more of like how are they understanding their assignment are they able to is he able to get yeah. the point across and teach them and i think that puts him in a position where he is very vulnerable for to lose to lose that position because in 2023, you cannot have a defense that's losing you games. You couldn't have you, – they didn't have that excuse this year. You had the excuse last year because you had a lot of new pieces, right? Yep. I understand mm -hmm. that. There was no excuse for that this year. We talked time and time again about how many people they were bringing back, especially in the secondary. There was no excuse for how poor – especially the, the coverage breakdowns were early in the season. There's no excuse for that. I will say this, devil's advocate. Do I think they've been good? No. Do I think anybody on this coaching staff has really been good enough that we can say going into next year they absolutely have a job? No. But for years in Cleveland, you begged for consistency. You need consistency. You also have to earn that as a coaching staff, yes. You also cannot have success firing coaches every two seasons. You can't. Again, I'm not saying uh, Stump Mitchell. Al makes a good point. Stump Mitchell. Make Stump Mitchell the owner of the team at this point. <laughs> you and I are on board with that. Um, 
at some point you need to have consistency. You can't keep turning over coaches year in and year out. I'm not saying Joe Woods deserves to be here next year or Mike Prefer or even Kevin Stefanski. All I'm saying is at some point you need to have consistency within an organization. They wanted this when they hired Stefanski. That's why they paired him up with the hire of Andrew Barry. They want consistency desperately in this organization. I don't know if they're going to get it after this season, but just something to think about going forward. And I do think, though, <laughs> Robert, good that, point. I do think to that point, the consistency that the Browns have lacked these past whatever years, decades, it's been so long. You want winning the, consistency. Yes. The consistency yeah. issues are also, but it is. The, the issues are with the head coach and the GM. Those turn over like no other. That's what people are tracking. That's the inconsistency because a head coach comes in and wipes clean the offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, yeah. special teams coordinator, and brings in their own staff. What you can do while still being consistent is change your coordinators, change some of those coaches, because you will see coaching changes. That happens with teams all the times at lower levels. Now coordinators that step up. But I don't think that you – you risk your consistency if you do find somebody else to move into a coordinator position. To me, if they choose to move on from Joe Woods or Mike Prefer, that doesn't concern me with the consistency part of it because I do believe that if they keep Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry, that's where they've got their consistency. Then it's just fine tuning. I do like both, both of them. I do see areas of concern for both of them, and I do see – why the Browns would choose to maybe look elsewhere. So I don't think either of them are safe, but no job is safe in the NFL. Uh, and and so I wouldn't be surprised with either of those becoming big changes this offseason. All right, Chuck tells his kickoff is coming. Cam, what do you want to see in the second half in one word? Watson. Momentum. Give us something. Combine those two. Watson and momentum. Give us something to get excited about going into the offseason. Cam, this is it. Last one. This is the last one until Thanks next year. It's been great. Thanks for joining us as always. John Doss will soon shift out of the frame, and we hope to catch you guys next season.